Hey, a friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. This week, I wanted to try something a little different for the YouTube channel and website. And so we're going to have a five day mini series called Five Days to Better EQing in Logic Pro 10. These videos are designed to help you get down to EQing faster, more efficiently, and more effectively in Logic Pro 10 using only the Logic EQs. Now, this is not a deep dive into every little nuance and detail of the Logic EQs. Instead, these are just five strategies that will help you get to EQing so you feel more comfortable and more confident as you work on your own Logic projects. So to start with today, we're gonna focus on how to make room and space for clarity to exist in your Logic projects. Everyone wants clarity, right? We all feel that our projects are a little muddy, that they need more space, more depth, more width. And the number one tool that is going to help you achieve all of those things is EQ. And to achieve that space, that depth, that clarity, we actually have to scrape away the mud. We got to clean the window so we can see through the window. And that will allow our tracks to have the space that they need to have clarity in our mixes. Today, I want to show you exactly how you can achieve this using high pass filters in Logic. So I have a project here and let's just take a quick listen to it. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitability. I never knew what you went through. Maybe I just could Okay, not that inspiring, right? Sounds very muddy. And this track is amazing. I can tell you because I've mixed it before. I love this song, but it's, you know, needed some help. If we take a look at the mixer real quick, you can see that I've done nothing to this project. I have track stacks for each major instrument group. If I open my track stacks, there's literally nothing aside from fader adjustments and panning. And I have a gain plug in here just to make sure I'm not clipping my output as I record this video. So after I've done my due diligence in terms of setting faders and pan knobs the best I can, at that point, I go track by track and I set high pass filters for every track in my session. Now, for the sake of being respectful of your time, I'm only going to focus on the major instrument groups instead of going track by track. But what I would do is, is I would open a channel EQ for each one of these tracks and I would identify where the low level noise and gunk that isn't part of the main instrument tone and I would carve it right out of that track. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna solo the vocal track here and I'm gonna make sure that the analyzer is on in the channel EQ. And let's just watch the channel EQ. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never try to forget you. It's just an inevitability. So we can see that there's a lot of activity about 200 hertz and down, but I can guarantee you that most of that is not anything that we need. So I'm going to introduce a low pass filter. I'm going to set it to a very steep filter and I'm just going to start driving this down. My goal is, is to remove all of the tone of the vocals. So all that's left is that low level noise. And that will let me know what needs to be removed from our vocal track. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never wanted to Can you hear that? Probably not. There's not much going down at the bottom there, but yet there's still sound and noise. It's probably like an air conditioner in the room. I don't know, just the performer moving around. And then we see the occasional pop of a plosive, such as a P sound or a B sound. So my goal is to just scrape all of that out the best I can. So we're tightening up this vocal track. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitable. So I set the low pass filter to identify where the noise is. And that was about 130 hertz. And then I set my high pass filter to 130 hertz. So now it's here before and after. 
I never wanted to get to. I only wanted to be. You hear that? That B wants to pop aggressively, but we've tamed most of that. I never wanted to get to. I only wanted to be. So it's subtle, but it has a cumulative effect across your mix. You know, we're just working on four instrument groups right now. But imagine if you have 50 or 100 tracks in your session, this is going to make a huge difference. And the more that you mix, the more it will become obvious when you bypass and turn on these high pass filters. So let's work our way down the rest of the instruments. Work on the drums here. With kick drums and bass guitars, I don't go much beyond 20 or 30 hertz. The kick and the bass are supposed to occupy the low end, so we don't want to hurt those. That's why I'm leaving this at 20 hertz. Okay, let's move on to the bass. Thirty hertz feels good to me. Okay, now the guitars. And if you're having a hard time trying to figure out where that noise ends, once again, you can just open up a low pass filter, which means that everything above this frequency will be removed. So we can just hone in on that low level noise that we don't need. You may have to turn up your monitors while you're doing this so you can hear that low level energy. But I'm feeling good at about 90 to 100 hertz on the guitars. I'll even, I'll set it to 90 and I'll even kind of roll it off a little. Now, I like to use very steep filters for my low pass and high pass filters, 48 dB per octave, actually. This is a very controversial subject in audio circles. Most audio people like more gentle curves, such as 18 decibels per octave, 12 decibels per octave, and it has a great effect. You're not only cutting out that low level noise, but you're also rolling off the low end of the track, so it's helping you balance the low end as well. But for me personally, I like to make sure that everything below this frequency is being removed. So that's my strategy. You're welcome to use it. You're welcome to adopt your own. So let's now hear these tracks together and I'll introduce and bypass the high pass filter. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitability. I never knew what to it's subtle, so I don't blame you if you're not quite hearing it, but again, when you make your way to like 80, 90% of the way through your mix, you're adding compressors and reverbs and you're feeling pretty good on your mix, I suggest having a channel EQ dedicated to just high passing so you can turn it off and then on. The more you mix, the closer you get to your destination, the more the high pass filters are going to be very obvious in your mixes. Now, one last point for you. Some readers often say to me, hey, Chris, I use only software instruments or I use something that's not a live instrument being recorded. Do I really have to worry about this? And I would say absolutely. In fact, let's open the Apple Loops library. I'm going to drag in an Apple Loop and it's gonna be a MIDI loop so we know it's a software instrument. And I'm gonna turn off all of the plugins, introduce a new channel EQ here, and let's just see what happens. I'll turn this off. Here we go. Can you see that? About 100, 150 hertz, just noise. That's not necessarily always bad, but for most productions, your kick drum or your kick sound, your bass guitar or your bass synth or bass sound, that's what needs to occupy the low end. Not just random noise from synths and vocals and guitars and everything else. So that's why I set high pass filters as soon as I'm done setting my faders and my pan knobs. Now tomorrow, 
we're going to dig into how to cut out the mud from your tracks. See you then.